आई देर वेलकम टू माई व्यूज एंड न्यूज टू न्यूज स्टोरीज फर्स्टली हंड्रेड ऑफ इथियोपियन मिलिट्री सोल्जर्स हैव बिन टेकन प्रिजनर बाय अमहारा फानो फाइटर्स वीडियोज इन सर्कुलेशन सेवरल प्रो फानो न्यूज आउटलेट्स है पब्लिश्ड वीडियोज वेड इट हैपन uh can we say that suddenly fano groups have gained a momentum and they are now sweeping across the amhara region three incidents in the last uh, one week showing that fano is definitely accelerating its operations secondly a key meeting between two arab leaders they discussed uh different issues including ethiopia somalia and shem both are uh, stakeholders in the ongoing confrontation between ethiopia and somalia uh, so which two leaders met what did they discuss what are their interests in this region Firstly, viewers, uh, Fano groups have intensified their operations. Now, whatever they are doing, they are recording it. Videos are being released. Around six to seven hours ago, Fano groups released a video showing hundreds of ENDF soldiers who have been taken prisoner. Over hundred, you can say. who have been taken prisoner by fano fighters fano groups have been capturing soldiers uh, since the start of war uh, last year but we never saw uh, hundreds of soldiers captured by fano in one operation we did see videos of endf pws in the custody of fano but this is the first time that we're seeing such a large number of uh, endf members taken prisoner in just one operation the operation was conducted between kobo and woldia it means it was conducted by wollo fano because this area is controlled by wollo fano kalium is the name of the place where fano group say that an entire regiment of the ethiopian national defense force was disarmed and taken prisoner wollo fano by the way i've been telling you has turned into a big fano group why mere wada jo and kal fantahun joined both are large fano groups thirdly fano groups from raya sadran tigray led after tigray fighters entered there they also joined fano wollo fano is being underestimated you could see uh, you will see that this fano group would make some big moves keeping in view their strength if they know how to properly organize and use their resources their man power they can be a real threat to ethiopian military regional forces across wollo both south wollo and north wollo in this operation uh, more than 100 around 150 endf soldiers were taken prisoner the operation was conducted on 48 hours ago if 150 have been taken prisoner how many were killed in this operation not clear because it the open military never confirms its losses hundreds of endf soldiers now in the custody of fano fighters by the way a few days ago colonel fantahun asked red cross to intervene he said that uh, hundreds of endf soldiers were in the custody of uh, fano fighters and fano was ready to hand over the soldiers to international committee of red cross he did not want to hand over the pws to the open government so he made a call to the red cross to intervene uh, but the federal government i don't think will allow red cross to intervene because if uh, soldiers are handed over to red cross by fano it would be a humiliation for the military it would be confirmed internationally that hundreds of years soldiers have been taken prisoner by, by, by an armed group in ethiopia 
So I don't think that government would allow Red Cross to intervene, but soldiers will suffer. Government basically waits for FANO to release these soldiers. And sometimes FANO groups have to release soldiers because they have to change their locations very frequently. And they cannot just uh, uh, carry, if, if this is the right word, the soldiers along with them. So they have to release them because obviously feeding them, providing them housing become... Uh, a burden for FANO groups. It seems that suddenly FANO has upped the ante now in its uh, offensive operations. Three incidents in the last one week showing that FANO fighters are taking their struggle to a new level, a higher level. Firstly, they captured Matimma, border was closed. Uh, more than 70 ENDF soldiers fled into Sudan. They were disarmed by Sudanese military. Border was closed by Sudanese authorities. Pano controlled Matima. Matima was closed last night. I confirmed last night. Uh, Sudanese sources confirmed that Matima was closed. Talabat to Matima. Border was closed la last night. Fighting was ongoing between military and Pano. Military wanted to recontrol uh, uh, Matima. Then after Matimma, Fano uh, fighter carried on an attack, an ambush attack on a convoy of the Ethiopian military. On Gondar to Matimma Road, uh, I think more than 30 ENDF vehicles were damaged in that attack. Again, video was uh, recorded and video was made public by Fano fighters. Now, third operation by Fano fighters, this time in Volo, over 100 soldiers taken prisoner. And uh, there could be hundreds of others dead and injured too. Where is Jula? Where is the command of Ethiopian National Defense? By the way, the way Fano is sweeping now in some parts of Amaha region, it would give sleepless nights not just to Addis Ababa but groups in Oromia and Tigray too. Pano is gradually establishing itself as a key player in Ethiopian national politics, not just in the Amhari. I'll do a separate video on that, uh, hopefully, in coming hours or days. Secondly, we have a key meeting between two Arab leaders about issues in the Horn of Africa in the Middle East. Muhammad bin Zayd al Nihan, MBZ. The ruler of the UAE held a meeting with Egyptian foreign minister, Badr Abdilate. The two discussed different issues like uh, Gaza crisis, Libyan internal situation, Sudanese war and Ethiopia-Somalia tension. Both Egypt and UAE are stakeholders in Ethiopia-Somalia tension, we can say. By the way, uh, we know that Al-Sisi visited Turkey two days ago. He was warmly welcomed there. Uh, Egypt and Turkey are renewing the relations which could have an impact on the regional dynamics in the Horn of Africa too. UAE and Egyptian leaders talked about Ethiopia-Somalia conflict as well. we know that uh, Egypt is now directly involved in this conflict. Egypt is supporting Somalia's military. Egyptian troops arriving in Somalia, Ethiopia threatening Egypt. UAE is indirectly involved. UAE is supporting Ethiopia. UAE is in support of Ethiopian access to sea through Somali land. UAE wants Ethiopia to divert its cargo from Djibouti port to Babara port. UAE owns 50% of this port uh, shares. Uh, Turkey is involved as well. Turkey is mediating between Ethiopia and Somalia. And Turkey has signed a defense deal with Somalia. It is a key trading partner of Ethiopia as well. How will Egypt and UAE ensure neutrality or how will they find a solution to the head-on collision situation between Ethiopia and Somalia? Egypt, I think, would like some concessions from Ethiopia about GERD. 
Egypt's main concern is God. It wants to bind down Ethiopia to some sort of agreement. It never accepted God from day one. So that is why it is intervening in Somalia. It wants to force Ethiopia to make concessions on God. UE uh, ruler Mahmoud bin Zaid is PM Abi's friend. If PM Abi shows some flexibility to Egypt on the issue of GERD, we could see some uh, improvement in relations between Ethiopia and Egypt, with Ethiopia and Somalia too. If Ethiopia does not show any flexibility, you'll see tensions rise and tensions could turn into military tensions too in the Horn of Africa, I believe. Let's see what happens. Thank you for watching.